Hi, welcome to lesson 4.5, dilations. Now, in the previous lessons, we did translations, we did rotations, we did reflections, which led us to congruence transformations. Now, today, we are going to be doing dilations. A dilation is when you either enlarge or reduce a figure in size. So obviously these are not going to stay the same size. So what you see here in this example right there is two triangles. One is bigger and one is smaller. We're going to study um, how, how can you get one small triangle to become a larger triangle. But before we do that, you will need three pieces of graph paper. And I will tell you exactly where they're going to go. Turn to page 113, and here at the bottom of page 113, you are going to put a piece of graph paper for problem number two. So pause the video and make sure you're gluing this. On the next page, on page 114, you're going to need a piece of, a piece of graph paper for problem number three and problem number four. So pause the video and glue those. On page 115, you are going to put problem one right here. Let's go back to the exploration. Let's go back to page 112. Okay, what you see in this example here is a great example of what is the dilation. As you can see, your pre-image triangle is triangle ABC, and your image triangle is triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime. And you can tell that obviously one is bigger than the other. So let's go ahead and look at what's happening with these coordinates, okay? So let's look at the coordinate of A, the coordinate of B, and the coordinate of C. So A happens to be 2, 1, B happens to be 1, 3, and C happens to be 3, 2. Now, you apply the dilation through the center or the origin, you would say. Now, we still haven't figured out what is going to be our scale factor. Our scale factor is just how big it's going to grow. So A prime, B prime, and C prime, let's look at those coordinates. Those coordinates are 4, 2, 2, 6, and 6, 4. Make an observation between the relationship between the coordinates of the image versus the coordinates of the pre-image. Trying to see if that's a bit of better lighting. Hold on. No, that's worse. Okay, I think that's better. It's kind of dark outside right now, so I don't have a lot of natural light. We're still good though. Okay, so as you can see, these numbers right here happen to be happen to be twice as much as these. Okay? So what this means that is that if you were to double this, 2 times 2, that's 4. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. And 2 times 2 is 4. Okay? What this means is that the scale factor is going to be 2. Therefore, we have an enlargement. Okay? Now, what happens if your coordinates do not change? They stay exactly as they are. That means that your scale factor would be 1. So therefore, everything remains unchanged. So what happens if your scale factor is less than 1? For example, 1 half. Okay. So what I would have to do is I would have to look at these coordinates right here and multiply them by 1 half. So... A prime, okay, 
would have to be um, one half multiplied by the x value, which is two, followed by one times, actually, no, take it back, one half times one. So that's gonna give you two and 0 0.5. I'm gonna leave them in decimal form because we're gonna graph them in a little bit. Now, B prime, okay, it's gonna be 1 half times 1, 1 half times 3. In decimal form, that's gonna be 0 0.5 and 1.5. C prime is going to be 1 half times 3 and 1 half times 2. Where am I getting all these numbers? 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 2 from the original coordinates of the triangle. So this is going to be 1.5 and 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot those points. Okay, so two and a half, 0 0.5 and 1.5, and 1.5 and 1. Well, something's wrong. Yes, my mistake came right here. That should be 1. It happens. So that will be 1 and 0 0.5. Okay, and then 1.5, 1. So it's gonna look something like this. So what ended up happening in this case is a reduction. Okay, so what happens if the numbers are less than one? So let's, let's, um, let's draw a number line so you can see what exactly is gonna happen. Okay, so the key numbers here are negative 1, 1, and anything above that. Okay, so if the numbers are, if the scale factor is bigger than 1 or less than negative 1, this is going to be an enlargement. So from here to here, This is going to be an enlargement. And if it's from negative 1 to negative 1, from negative 1 to 1, it's going to be a reduction. However, interestingly, if your scale factor is a negative, that's going to be the equivalent to a 180 degree rotation. Remind me to explain that in class. Why is it so? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and begin our examples. Let's start with example number one. Okay, for example number one, it says find the scale factor of the dilation. Okay. Now there is a part missing from the original diagram. I don't know why it got cut off, but the distance from there to there is 12. And the distance from here to here happens to be 8. And the image is this one and this one here is the pre-image. I do not know why it got cut off when I copied this, but it's there now. So here's the thing. There are multiple ways that we can find the scale factor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the scale factor by using the following ratio. The scale factor is the ratio of the length of the image over the pre-image. 
Now it could either be of the figure or the distance from the center of dilation to the figure. So in problem A, the image happens to be this one. So the distance from the center of dilation to the image happens to be 12. So K is going to be 12 over the distance of the pre-image happens to be 8. So I have two options. I can just simply reduce this by 4 or I can give a decimal. Both of these scale factors work. And that's for A. For B, the image happens to be this one. So that's 18. So that will be 18 over the pre-image, which happens to be this one, is 30. So they're both divisible by 6. That gives me 3 over 5 or 0 0.6. Now, because this scale factor is larger than 1, this is going to be an enlargement. Because this is less than 1, this is going to be a reduction. And this is example number one. Let's look at example number two. Example two. Graph ABC with the following vertices and its image after dilation with a scale factor of two. So when you're doing this, guys, pause the video, graph it, and play it, and you know, pause it, and go back and, and graph it. So do what you need to do to make sure you understand this. So A is 2, 1. B is 4, 1. And C is 4, negative 1. So this is my pre-image. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to apply the scale factor of 2. That means that I'm going to multiply every single one of these by 2, which means that I'm going to have a new image, and it's going to be the result of multiplying all these by 2. So 2, 1, multiply all those by 2, you get 4, 2. Multiply those by 2, you get 8, 2. Multiply these by 2, you get 8, negative 2 and then you proceed to graphing them. 4, 2, that's A prime, 8, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2, that's B double prime, and 8, negative 2, that's going to be C double prime. And then you connect them. So as you can see, this is a dilation about the origin with a scale factor of 2. All you do is multiply the 2 by every single one of these numbers. It's that simple. Dilations are actually not that bad. Let's look at example 3. The problem is when you have a fraction as your dilation. It looks hard, but honestly, it is not really. Let's plot these points first. Negative three, positive six. That's K. Zero, six. That's L. And for M, it's three, three. And for n is negative 3, negative 3. And you just simply connect those. Okay, so what we're going to do is a dilation of scale factor of 1 
third. So what we're going to do is we are going to multiply every single one of those coordinates by one third. Every single one of them. Okay, so the first one is negative three. So we're going to have one third times negative three. Then one third times six. And I'll, 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 I'll simplify them next. Zero, and then one third times three, one third times three, one third times negative three, one third times negative three, and then we simplify. One third of negative three, that's negative one. That right there is gonna be two, because six times one is six, divided by three is two. I should really put these prime. L prime is going to be zero, and that's going to be two. That's going to be one, one. And then that's going to be negative one, negative one. So then after you have this, now you have to plot it. Negative one, two. That's your k prime, 0, 2. That is your <clears throat> l prime, 1, 1. That is your m prime. And negative 1, negative 1, that is your n prime. So there it is. That is your dilation. So this is example number three. Let's look at example number five, I mean four. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing, except for now your scale factor is negative one half. So let's do this, F, G, H, oh, it's only three, nice. Okay, and our scale factor is negative one half. And we'll simplify them in just a bit. Okay, so f prime is going to be negative times a negative. That's a positive. 4 times 1 is 4 divided by 2, 2. That turns to positive. 2 divided by 2 is 1. That right there turns to positive, so that gives me a 1. That right there gives me negative 2, and h prime is going to give me a 1, and that's going to give me 1. Now all I have to do is graph. So f is negative 4, negative 2, g is negative 2, positive 4 h is negative 2, negative 2. Now that's the pre-image. So now we're going to graph this one. Okay, 2, 1, that's f prime. 1, negative 2, that is your g prime. And h is h prime is one one. So as you can see, there's a reduction, and also there's a 180 degree rotation. That is what I meant. When you have a negative scale factor, 
this right here rotates 180 degrees and then it dilates. All right, so that is example number four. Please make sure you are working on the extra practice uh, for section uh, 4.5, and that is on page 115 through 116. Thank you and have a great day.